Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Marshall, KL1R, Kilo Lima 1 Romeo. And he has a question about a kind of wire that we do not see much in ham radio. It's called copper weld. Uh, it's steel and it is coated with copper. Now steel is not nearly as good a conductor as copper, but due to the so-called skin effect, the actual current doesn't penetrate very far into the wire and the copper part is thick enough to handle that. And the steel provides strength, okay? Now, uh, Marshall has a question about that steel. He says, I have an antenna question. A substantial number of hams build antennas out of all sorts of wire, and uh, including myself, he says. Some types of wire are prone to higher losses or less efficiency than others. True, but if you use copper, uh, whether hard or soft drawn, it has uh, excellent uh, conductivity, uh, will do very well. In fact, the only element that provides higher conductivity at room temperature is silver. Uh, however, <laughs> silver wire is starting to get a little expensive there. I might point out as an aside that the Manhattan Project back during World War II needed to make some extremely powerful magnets as part of its uh, gas diffusion uh, separation process for the uranium and they needed the most powerful magnets they could get. And they went to the U.S. Treasury and said, we need silver, we need a bunch of silver. And the uh, Treasury said, well, how much do you want? He says, we need about four tons. He says, tons, sir, we deal in ounces. So the guy did the little equation. Okay, umpteen million squat ounces, but we need it. And it was returned to the Treasury at the end of the war, but it was used to make wire that was used in the magnets to so have the highest possible conductivity. Now the only higher conductivity comes superconductors which are certain metals or uh, they are ceramics that have conductivity when lowered to very low temperatures. If you've ever used uh, or ever had an MRI uh, the big MRI machines use superconducting magnets and they have to be cooled to very, very low temperatures. The holy grail for physics has for a while been a superconducting material that works at room temperature. Here recently somebody thought they had found it but nobody could duplicate their experiment so it was shown to be false. We still don't have room temperature superconductors. If we had a room temperature superconductor, we'd make all our coax and all our uh, antennas out of whatever this was. Uh, but we don't. We don't have that. Now, he says, um, says these people are, uh, he says, I used to make all of my 40, 80, and 160 meter wire antennas out of copper clad steel because of its superior strength, which is a perfectly fine thing to do. Lately, I've been wondering if that was a good idea. It was, don't worry. Somewhere I've read that any ferrous core material is subject to hysteresis and eddy currents, uh, losses and alternating current circuits, in addition to ohmic resistance losses, which could be RF. This is true if the um, piece of material that is being used uh, like an iron core and transformer happens to line up with the magnetic fields in a certain way. You can get rotating currents, which are called eddy currents, inside of these things and lose quite a bit. That's why transformer cores are cut up into many fine pieces so you don't get these uh, types of currents so badly. Now, um, Many transformers reduce eddy current losses by employing multiple layers of thin steel alloy sheets. This is as the piece of metal that the transformer is wound around, okay, uh, rather than one th single thick steel core. Uh, 
So it extends that ideal out a little further. Compare copper clad steel wire that is one single strand versus multi-core copper clad strands, which would be very difficult to do, and you'd have to insulate between them. Any advantage going with multi-strand to reduce eddy current losses? I don't know of any, tell you the truth. Then let's add another question to the mix. Would there be any reduction in losses by using wire that has no ferrous core at all, such as commonly used in solid or stranded copper? Has anyone actually bothered to measure losses of different types of wire for antennas? I would think that the larger gauge wire would have less loss, such as 14 gauge versus 12 or 18 versus smaller. Okay, we're going a lot of different directions in this question here. Let me give you the bottom line. Copper clad steel, uh, usually sold under the brand name of Copper Weld, is a great wire for making antennas because it's long and thin and the electromagnetic force, I'm sorry, the magnetic forces that would align to create eddy currents don't in copper clad steel, it runs the wrong way, okay? Let's go back and take a quick look at what he's talking about. So, so um, usually indicated this way, we have turns around this for the primary and turns around this for the secondary and the turns ratio is what gives the uh, transformer value. Now this is often an iron core in um, 60 hertz or 50 hertz transformers, okay? And if you put a solid chunk of iron in there, it will work. But in the iron, you will get eddy currents, okay? Uh, eddy currents going this way in here, and those currents are circle. They go in circles. It's like if you see a stream going downstream this direction, and you've got rocks in here and so on, you'll see that the current goes down and hits these, okay, and deflects around like this, hits these, and it just goes around in circles right here. Okay, these are called eddy currents, and you can see them anytime you look at a river with a lot of rocks in it and so on. You see little, uh, sometimes we call them whirlpools. The, the water just goes around in a circle. Okay, that's an eddy current. Now, you get the same kind of thing in these solid cores. So what they do is they split the solid cores in such a way to avoid the eddy currents. You split them into thin sheets like this. Now there are still small eddy currents in here, but they are very small eddy currents. This is called lamination or laminating the core or laminated core, okay? So what you have inside the transformer are these E-shaped, okay? And then they have alternating, um, things here, okay, like this. And what happens is before they put the second one on, they do the windings around these like this, okay? And then they slip this one in like that. There's a whole bunch of them, you know, 10 or 15 thickness and they're all got some kind of gunk to insulate them from each other, like varnish or something. And they put them all together and wrap the living daylights out of that thing. And that's how you create your uh, uh, utility current uh, transformers. You've got to have something like that. Your power supply transformers, if you have an analog supply, will look like this and so on. The idea is to reduce the eddy currents. Now, the wire in copper weld is a um, piece of, just a long piece of wire, and I'm going to do a cut through, okay, down the middle of it. And it's got just a little coating of copper on the outside. 
This inside is made of a high tension steel with just a little bit of copper plated onto it. Okay, other ways of doing it are to wrap a thin sheet of copper around it and fold it and so on. But anyway, copper weld is what they're made of. Now the skin effect, and there's a formula for this in the antenna handbook. And one of these days I'm going to work it through to see how deep the skin is. Now one of the problems with the skin effect is that most of the current flows at or very near the surface of the wire. Again, this is a cutaway because it comes out and around, all right? And inside, this thing right here provides tremendous strength. It's a steel wire made to be under high tension. So you can pull these very tight. Um, now, utilities use these too. Again, uh, using the inside. You could even make this thing hollow, just a, a plastic tube. This is why in Yaggies and so on, the elements are made of uh, aluminum tubing. Okay. Because it's only on the surface that's of importance. This is called, again, the skin effect. The lower the frequency, the further it, it will go into the conductor. But uh, at HF frequencies, you're just getting a little something on the, the edge. Now, as you go higher in frequency, the actual depth of penetration is lower, and the wire will show uh, a higher resistance at that frequency because the skin effect is much lower. By the way, this is the reason on coax cables, and we'll just turn that into a coax cable, um, you've got the current on the outside and on the inside here. Okay, let me do that in another color. The current is on the outside of the center conductor and on the inside. Now, as you go up in frequency, the conduction depth gets lower. This is what causes higher losses, higher resistance, and higher frequencies because the skin depth will be less. Okay. Now, uh, this is a big generalization, of course. If you ran Maxwell's equations on this, you'd learn more about it. But by and large, they try and make the skin depth such that it will, uh, con that it will conduct utility current. So that means it's just great for RF. It will be great. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the problem of the eddy currents in there. They're not going to make things less. Uh, actually, you want the thicker wire, like 12 gauge versus 14 gauge, which has l less overall copper. Hmm? Yeah, man. No. Oh. Okay. If you take 14 gauge versus 12 gauge, okay, you've got less copper here than you do here. It's the copper that's important. What's inside is not. So uh, what that means is that uh, if you're using a copper weld, then uh, you will not need to worry about what's happening with the eddy currents. They are negligibly, negligibly small. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've never used copper weld. I understand it's a royal pain to deal with because underneath is steel. Steel does not like to bend, and if you do bend it, it does not like to bend back. So you can get kinks or parts that are not straight and uh, so on. A lot of hams don't deal with copper weld simply because um, of the difficulty in dealing with it. Uh, you've got to pay just to titch more. The, one of the reasons utilities use it is because of wire thievery. People steal the wire because copper's expensive and they take it in and nobody asks any questions and they, they get so much money for so much copper. Nobody will pay for copper weld, however, which is why the utilities use them because you can't separate the copper, which is expensive, from the steel, which is not. Okay, steel is ubiquitous. 
uh, on the planet. It's interesting to note there's more aluminum than steel in the Earth's crust. But uh, anyway, we like copper. Most hams just use copper wire. That's what I use. I've never used copper weld. Now, uh, I have a spool, or a partial spool, very partial, of uh, U.S. Army telephone field wire, which is uh, two black strands sort of woven together to be laid on the ground or strung on poles uh, to provide field telephones. And that is made of, I think, four strands of uh, tinned copper and three strands of steel. And this stuff is a royal pain to deal with. Um, and I haven't used it in years. The last time I used it was to make an antenna. And um, I've just gone to buying uh, soft round copper at uh, Home Depot and not worrying very much about what's going on. So, um, Marshall, I hope I've answered your question. Go ahead and use the copper weld. Uh, for that, it works fine. Uh, if you're going to put a lot of current on it, like uh, with an amplifier or something, definitely go to the thicker wire. It's going to be fine. And remember that the skin effect, which is sort of a fallout of some aspects of Maxwell's equations, will uh, allow the use of it because the center part is just for strength only. It's not for conducting or carrying electricity. And the way it's aligned with the magnetic fields, you're not going to have a big eddy effect in there at all. And so uh, copper weld 12 gauge will conduct RF as well as uh, just plain copper at RF. Now at lower utility frequencies, that could be a little different, but uh, also note that in high voltage applications like the utilities use, they're dealing with uh, 10 or 100,000 volts or something like that, and the electricity is going to travel on the skin anyway. So again, interesting, uh, very interesting topic. So uh, Marshall, thank you for your question, and I hope that gives you an answer, KL1R. Um, so there you have it. Now, be sure to watch our weekly live stream on Thursday evenings and uh, Thursday evenings Mountain Time. And also don't forget that uh, there's a giveaway that you can enter. Um, send your giveaway uh, entry to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And either on the card or in an envelope, uh, put your name, call sign, and uh, your shipping address and your phone number in case I have to get in touch with you. Now, um, we also have for sale a little uh, thumb drive that has my 10 most popular videos on it. Uh, this is good for like club presentations. If your club doesn't have good internet access where you are, of course, all these videos are available for free online, but I think the uh, the charge for the um, thumb drive is $29.95 anywhere in uh, postpaid anywhere in the USA. If you are outside the USA, contact me for postage rates because while it's fairly inexpensive to ship to say things like Austria or Germany, it's hideously expensive to ship to Canada. I don't know why, but there you have it. Okay, and until we next meet, 73.